Hey guys, it's Ginger from Ginger Lee's Designs with Soulful Things. Today I'm doing a little something different. I'm expanding a little bit with this video. So instead of just giving you basic information for ideas of what different products you can buy and suggestions for how to use them and whatnot and how they maybe take paint or how to apply them and approximate cost, stuff like that. Today what I'm doing is a little bit more in depth and detailed, but don't be afraid. It's gonna be fun and creative and it's gonna be practicable. Remember, practice makes better, not perfect. So practice, 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 and you will achieve the goal that you're looking for so that you can apply some of these ideas to some finished products for yourself, some paintings. So I'm gonna teach you guys a few steps with a palette knife, the tips and pointers that I have and how I use various knives. Let's go. Or love these guys, particularly when you're using them, um, painting a big piece and or you're doing the backgrounds for smaller pieces and you're doing them like as whole boards or you're just coating the first step of the canvas. But this is all for after the first step of the canvas is done, I use one of these products um, unless I'm attaching paper with those two guys, the more fluid products. Um, so great with palette knives, great with small palette knives. These are my favorites. Um, I will say this, the fluid ones, you can use a brush. The other ones, when I very first started using this product, probably 15 years ago, um, the, uh, I used the extra heavy gel gloss and I had no idea what I was doing. And I used a paintbrush and I just kept on working it and working it and working it. And it kept on getting thicker and then crumbly and gooey and, it turned into being a hot mess on the canvas. But if you can practice with palette knives and figure out the palette knife mystery, that it is such fun to use these texture products with your palette knives. Okay, let me show you some examples of pieces that I've done using these various products. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about it. So this was a molding paste that I did the background of, and it's very, um, it's smooth. It has some divots in it and whatnot, but it also has a, it's not totally chalky, but it is a bit chalky. And so if you want to use watercolors or any, just about anything on this, you can go straight into using it. Um, and as an example, these are watered down acrylics. There's some oil sticks. There's some watercolor pencils on this piece. And um, the background, if you can tell, is very matte. This is on a um, piece that I uh, gallery, gallery wrapped myself, built the frame, and then wrapped it myself with some uh, fabric. And um, wanted it to be very transparent from underneath. You can kind of see my hand moving under there even. But anyway, um, so I first put spots, swooshes, if you will, proper word, proper terminology, kidding, um, swooshes of molding paste in various spots and then came back with, like I said, some acrylics that were straight up acrylics, some watered down acrylics, some oil pastels, some oil sticks, some um, watercolor pencils, and some water even to cause this dripping. So this is on molding paste, as I said. Um, and then another example is that matte medium. On this particular piece, you'll actually see this is the matte medium. These little petals and flowers are the matte medium. And the table is actually the gloss. You can even see the reflection from the gloss versus from the matte medium. So this is the extra heavy gel matte and this is the extra heavy gel gloss. And this is what ends up happening when you use those two products. This is a floral that I did and I, um, used a lot of watercolor and acrylic ink on this and then watercolor pencils. But what happens is um, on that mat, the gloss paint kind of sits more on top of it. The, this, this paint has a gloss finish to it. And so it kind of sits on top of it, absorbs just a little bit, but mostly sits on top of it. But these acrylic inks in particular, in particular, if you can tell, show a ton of like different depth because what happens is that matte finish kind of, um, repels it to a degree, which is really great. You can also wipe a little bit off even. Again, I use my fingers a ton, and so I end up wiping some off. Whereas um, on this bottom, it actually 
just totally sits on top and so kind of kind of the way that these do even though this is on matte it's the type of paint that i use so it ends up acting very very differently um, but that is an example of the matte uh, extra heavy gel matte with paint on top of it this is an example of the gloss extra heavy gel gloss and again it's a um, gallery wrap piece that that we built in here that um we built the frame and then wrapped it and i put a whole bunch of uh gloss gel see how those reflection i mean that light catches those peaks really well right in there and again i used my large palette knife to get these movements on the canvas this one's not painted yet that's how i started off and then this is an example of what it looks like once it has paint applied so um, this you can tell right here all this is the most obvious place has a big old chunk of um, texture and of height in fact I'll show you see it coming off of the canvas literally um, and it's supposed to represent like sea foam and waves sky and this is the ocean I live at the beach and so this is all water scene and then meets the sky and um, and that's kind of where the sky and the water meet is this big old chunk of like foamy stuff for texture. So that is the um, gloss gel medium. And you can see that I had painted on there and then I wiped it off and because it's gloss, it repels it really easily. And so it's very easy to wipe off. Whereas this down here was actually um, the molding paste. And so it took the paint very, very differently. You can still wipe it off, but it still wants to kind of hold on to more of it because it seeps in a little bit. So that is a couple of different texture mediums that you can try to explore with. They sell them in all different sizes. They can, you can get them in a small container on up to the gallon size, but that allows you to kind of see and experiment with, uh, give you a little bit of direction to try to see what it is that you would like to start with. Okay, so I hope that some of these tips and pointers that I gave you will prove to be beneficial for you when you venture down the road of palette knives, making whatever you desire with a palette knife. It's really fun. It's not nearly as bad. I know it's a little bit threatening and intimidating in the beginning but really the great thing about palette knives and the great thing about paint or even some of these texture mediums is in general you can scrape it right off which is awesome not always but a lot of times you can so go get them tiger you can do it thanks for having fun and doing some interesting creative things with me and if you have any questions or any requests please leave it down in the comment section below and don't forget to like this video, please, 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 and subscribe to my channel so that we can keep you posted for when new things are coming and all kind of fun stuff. So you guys take care. It was nice hanging out with you. Peace out.